This is White Plains Week, the weekly roundup of White Plains, Westchester, and world news with John Bailey, editor and publisher of the daily internet newspaper, White Plains Citizen Net Reporter, WPCNR.com. Jim Benneroff, editor and publisher of SuburbanStreet.com and WhitePlains.com. And me, Peter Katz, formerly with NBC, ABC News, and stations from Boston to Los Angeles. White Plains Week, what's happening? Who are the newsmakers? What's in store for the future? The views and opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the participants. White Plains Week is presented on Optimum Cable Channel 76, Verizon Fios Channel 45, and on the internet at whiteplainsweek.com, youtube.com, and wpcommunitymedia.org. Now, White Plains Week. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. White Plains, Westchester and the world. John Bailey with Peter Katz, the anchor for all seasons, and Jim Benneroff is on assignment tonight. Now the headlines for a busy March 2nd, 2018 White Plains Week. Coyote attacks reported in Hastings and North Yonkers and Muscoot Farm and Somers. School district receives threat from a White Plains student in wake of Parkland, Florida shootings. The threat posed no danger to the school district, please say, but the investigation is still ongoing. No word on the student's status from either the police or the school district, I asked. School superintendent Ricca's retweet of a news article on arming teachers in schools draws controversy in the school district. The superintendent of schools, Mr. Ricca, schedules a community information session for this coming Thursday, March the 8th. Questions you want to ask should be sent to the White Plains PTA Council. White Plains assessment roll for two, 2018 is in, and it is up one half percent. It enables the city and school district to raise spending slightly without it impacting the tax rate. But the increase in city real estate values has slowed. County Executive George Latimer brings back former County Commissioner of Corrections Joseph Spano, who served in the Andy Spano administration in the same position. Latimer promises restoration of anti-recidivism measures. The Galleria is bringing in an S-Sports facility coming in this coming year. County suspends voluntary vetting program for Uber, Lyft ride-sharing drivers. Latimer says he seeks a better cooperative effort to investigate driver backgrounds and keep riders safe. Playland's North Boardwalk damage is repaired by hurricane is repaired what well, damaged by hurricane sandy in 2013 is nearly completely repaired playland summer job fair takes place march 10th at the county center still no decision on playland standard amusements deal now in limbo the white plains committee on the disabled discusses issues of concern to the dis disabled School District appoints Scott Pepper of Morristown, New Jersey, School District Head of Human Resources. Shelley Mayer and Julie Killian circulars hit the mail. 53 days left until April 24th special election. And now, Peter, we go to the White Plains Week Roll of Newsreel of Time. And there he is. That is a very mad coyote. And the uh, coyote has been prowling Yonkers, and the health department suggests that it could be rabid. So people doesn't, should be, be beware of it. Doesn't look at all like the cartoon character, does not, he? No, not the roadrunner uh, coyote. But this is serious problem. If you see an uh, animal like, strangely, a coyote looks somewhat like that, and in a very, very bad mood, you need to report it to the health department or the police right away. House pets who are sent outside to wander around on yeah. their own are in danger. Absolutely. And humans can be in danger too. These animals have attacked humans. Mm -hmm. And uh, next up on the agenda, we go to the school district controversy. That This was the White Plains Examiner this week. 
It had an article on the gun issues in schools uh, featuring a uh, uh, meeting called by the Blindbrook uh, School District, which uh, was also photo, held with the Nita The photo Lowy. has Nita Lowy right, That's in, right. right in the middle there. And this the took place last Friday morning when we were taping the show. Obviously, we would have been there, of course. And uh, then, the, and another article, it appears that Dr. Joseph Ricca, by retweeting a news article about possibly arming teachers with guns in schools, got into a controversy with many folks in White Plains who suspected him of suggesting that uh, teachers should have guns in schools, and he said he does not believe, in this article, that the uh, teachers should be armed, and um, he is adamant about that, but he will probably go over this whole situation at a uh, meeting coming this Thursday, March the 8th, at 7 p.m. at the White Plains High School Auditorium, in which he and school officials, and we, prob we believe public safety officials, will also discuss these the following questions, then you'll have you can see a complete list of those questions on the Citizen Net Reporter website. And if you have questions of your own you want to ask, mail them to the WPTA Council at the email at the base there, WPPTA Council at gmail.com. Uh, questions will not be asked from the floor. But that's a real open meeting, isn't it, John? Well, I... Why do they do uh, this? Why do they say, uh, we're open, uh, we believe in open government, we believe in transparency, and yet they won't answer questions from people? Well, they will if you think about them in advance, which means they'll which, clear them in yes, advance. Yes, means they have a chance to censor and, and prepare their answers and not be caught off guard, and often that means not being spontaneous and candid. <sighs> yes, well... Not making an accusation that no, that's what's going to happen not, on right. Thursday, but... Certainly not. And to kind, that kind end... Of, kind of like attending a White House press briefing, isn't yes, it? Yes, to that end, the president stepped in. Well, actually, uh, President Trump had an unannounced lunch meeting at the White House on Sunday with officials from the National Rifle Association, and he met with NRA lobbyists at the White House last night. They urged him to stand in the way of any meaningful gun law reform in the wake of the Parkland, Florida massacre such as banning the sale of military assault weapons. Now, in a televised hour-long meeting at the White House during the week, Trump and congressional leaders from both parties discussed gun legislation which is being drafted. Trump proposed a new law allowing the government to take away people's guns without due process, saying when the government suspects someone shouldn't have a gun, it should seize the gun first and give the person due process later on. Remember during the campaign, he was accusing uh, someone named Clinton of wanting to take away people's guns without due process. How quickly will you forget? Trump seemed to be in favor of increasing the age limit at which you can buy assault weapons, and he again pushed his and the NRA's idea of arming school teachers. But he also showed his ignorance about basic gun facts and had to be corrected by Senator Dianne Feinstein. You can buy a handgun. You can't buy one. You have to wait till you're 21. But you can buy the kind of weapon used in the school shooting at 18. I think it's something you have to think about. No Would you sign President? that? So, I, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give it a lot of consideration, and I'm the one bringing it up. And a lot of people don't even want to bring it up because they're afraid to bring it up. But you can't buy a handgun at 18, 19, or 20. You have to wait till you're 21. But you can buy the, the gun, the weapon used in this horrible shooting at 18. Uh, you are going to decide. The people in this room pretty much are going to decide. But I would give very serious thought to it. I, I can say that the NRA is opposed to it. And I'm a fan of the NRA. I mean, there's no bigger fan. I, I'm a big fan of the NRA. They want to do it. These are great people. These are great patriots. They love our country. But that doesn't mean we have to agree on everything. It doesn't make sense that I have to wait till I'm 21 to get a handgun, but I can get this weapon at 18. I don't know. So I was just curious as to what you did in your bill. We, you don't we, address we, didn't, we didn't address it, Mr. President. Look, I think you know we, why? Because you're afraid of the NRA, right? No, no, no. an issue back then. No, the NRA five didn't. years ago. Yeah, they it's, never it's, came it's, up. It's a big issue right now. A lot of people are talking right. about it. But a lot of people, a lot of people are afraid of that issue, raising the age for that weapon to 21. 
Mr. President, what do we do about weapons of war easily accessible on our streets? What you're going to have to do is discuss it with everybody and any solution. No, it's a very complex solution. You do. You have you have weapons on the street. That's what we're talking about with black market. These are black market weapons. And, you know, the problem, Diane, is that these aren't where you walk into a store or buy. These are where somebody hands you a gun and you hand them Oh, no, some you money. go into a store and you can buy an, an AR-15. You can. You can buy a Tech 9 I mean, you can buy all these weapons. Well, this is what you're going Light to have triggers, to discuss, many Joe. Bullets. Yeah, Joe and Pat, you're going to have to discuss that. You'll sit down with Diane and everybody else, and you'll come up with something. And I think it, I, I really believe it has to be very strong. I'd rather have you come down on the strong side instead of the weak side. The weak side would be much easier. I'd rather have you come up with a strong, strong bill and really strong on background checks. Now, did you notice? President Trump's body language. The Body Language Academy says that when a person has a nervous, negative, or defensive attitude, he will fold his arms firmly on his chest, a strong signal he feels threatened. And yeah, that's, that's the way that's he was but, sitting there. Yes. Now, the televised meeting had some people wondering if it just wasn't an episode of a new television series, perhaps called The Gun Apprentice, in which uh, what gets fired are AR-15 assault rifles. It wouldn't be the first time Trump has put on a public show where he seemed to express a reasonable policy, such as doing something to help the DACA immigrants, and then did a total policy flip-flop. Now, as of this morning, when we're recording this program, the word from Capitol Hill, specifically from Mitch McConnell, the Senate leader, is that there will be no immediate action on guns by Congress. So, well... Once again, our co the do-nothing Congress. At least for now. You could kill hundreds of people and they would do nothing. Really, they haven't, ever. So. That, that, now, speaking of corrections, George Latimer, the county executive, introduced two new commissioners to corrections, and there they are. He's congratulating them. Mr. Latimer is back to the camera. That is Joseph Smano, Commissioner of Corrections, and Louis Molina, Deputy Commissioner. And in the following video, Mr. Um, Latimer introduces them, and then I ask Mr. Latimer about the uh, effects of uh, recidivism um, measures being curtailed in the last administration, and also if a new prison was possible. Thank you all for attending. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and I'm joined by Westchester County Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins for our announcement today of uh, two appointments to lead our uh, Corrections Department. We have here today the appointment of Joseph K. Spano as Commissioner of the uh, County Corrections uh, Department and Louis Molina as First Deputy Commissioner. Uh, we are striving, and I think with these two appointments, we've achieved both continuity and change. And we intend to make some additional uh, actions in this department over the course of the next few weeks to continue that uh, philosophy of both continuity and change. The challenges of running the correctional uh, facilities, which are uh, extensive and, and involve uh, many employees, something in the vicinity of 900 employees, uh, and dealing with uh, individuals who are incarcerated for reasons, that uh, make it very important that we provide safety for the people that are managing these facilities, require us to have people who have experience in a variety of areas of law enforcement and in corrections as well. And I think uh, by asking uh, Joe Spano, who has served previously as a commissioner of this department, to return, he was involved in um, uh, the corrections department since 1982, and he's seen this, uh, this department in every possible capacity from line up to deputy commissioner prior to becoming commissioner. Served as commissioner, left uh, January of 2010, and he's had some very important private sector experience that I think has broadened his experience. And now as we have him back, we're confident that he brings back the best of both worlds, the experience that he uh, achieved over his many years in the, in the department, and as well experience in the private sector that uh, opens the door for him to come back and make a continued contribution to the department. And Louis Molina, as first deputy commissioner, we have an individual who comes to us with a great varied experience. Uh, Lou uh, served in the United States uh, Marine Corps for four years. He's gone on to have positions in almost every area of the law enforcement community. He was NYPD for a number of years. He has served 
uh, as a criminal investigator. Uh, he has served within the district attorney investigative uh, responsibilities. Uh, he's uh, deputy chief of the Brooklyn District Attorney's Investigative Office. Uh, he has served uh, in New York City's Taxi and Limousine Commission as the first deputy chief enforcement division. Uh, and at such a young age to have all of these experiences we think is very important. Uh, but in terms of what, what has diminished over the last eight years, I don't know if any of us have a, a hard sense of what that is at this point. Not a hard number um, as far as the number of programs, John, but the fact of the matter is that we went from a, a system that had tremendous um, leadership and progressive ideas and having the lowest recidivism rate in New York State, and as uh, Commissioner Spano said, in the region as well, but to, to not having those programs at all. Right? We, we don't have the same kind of programs that we used to have to, to support the, the inmates to make sure that when they get back to the community, they don't come back to the facility, that we provide the support systems. And, and the commissioner, the deputy commissioner, had that experience of working with various community organizations to make that happen because it doesn't happen alone. So of course departments, um, those things didn't happen. Staffing was cut down, so the ability to, to be creative in those kind of programs just didn't occur. And that's not just happening in corrections, that's across the entire board because of the philosophy of the previous administration. Right. Well, at this stage of the game, it would be premature we to even discuss that. We have the implement a raise the age mandate that's come from the state. I voted for it as a state legislator. Uh, there's uh, a need to uh, implement that, and in so doing, there might be additional physical uh, structures and facilities as an alternative to incarceration, but that will have to be dealt with and analyzed going forward. We're certainly, as you saw a month ago and a month and a half ago, we visited Rockland County, a uh, dialogue going with our neighboring counties, so if there is some regional need that uh, can be met, we will have those discussions, but we're not at a point yet to know that. Uh, and if we do, in fact, determine that we need to have additional facilities, then we'll be very transparent about that process. Certainly, would have to be shown in our capital project uh, submissions in October and probably a lot earlier than that in the, in the dialogue of where we're going fiscally. Okay, and another piece of infrastructure that is taking shape is the North Boardwalk at Playland. And we took some shots of how far along it's coming. There will be a job fair for Playland employment next Saturday, March the 10th. And that's over at the Westchester County Center. That's uh, right. By the way. Exactly. Now, you know uh, something, John? Uh, there's a, there is water around Playland, obviously, and sometimes the water gets discolored. <laughs> And uh, if you've ever looked at Silver Lake separating White Plains from West Harrison during the summer heat and the water looked green and yucky or over at Playland you've ever seen some red water and you've been kept out of, you know just how annoying that can be. And actually it can be more than annoying because it can kill it's marine icky. life and pose <laughs> a health hazard for humans. On Tuesday in New Paul's, Governor Cuomo kicked off the first of four summits supporting the state's effort to protect valuable lakes and water bodies from harmful algae blooms, or HABs as they're called. The state is spending $65 million to study and start combating HABs. And Tuesday's summit brought together national and state experts with local steering committees to develop action plans at first for Lake Carmel, Palmer, and Putnam Lakes, and the Monhagen Reservoir. To me, HABs are God's way of saying, pay attention. I mean, really pay attention and pay attention now. Harmful algal blooms are poison. They are toxic. It's not a bunch of weeds that are floating and are unsightly and it's a, a cosmetic issue. 
These are poisons and toxins. They're growing at a frightening rate. 2015, there were 35 cases in the state of New York, the entire state. 2016, we found HABs in drinking waters, in drinking water supply, which now takes it to a new level. 2017, 100 beaches closed because of HABs. Two years, it went from a sporadic issue to a major consequential issue. Hey, there are major consequential issues all over the all over the place, especially in Washington these days. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, getting back to the local area, the Killian and Mayor race took off finally this week. This is the race for the state senate um, seat number thirty-seven district, uh, which Georgia Adam are occupied. And these are a couple of the brochures that arrived this week and. They both promise reform, ladies and gentlemen, and be sure and take a look at this campaign before you vote on April 24th. That's a Tuesday. The assessment roll came out in White Plains this week, and it's all good. Assessment roll is up a half a percent, 283 million from 281.4 million last year. But the trend is not really too, uh, promising because it only went up to about 0.6 percent this year as compared to 2.7 last year and if you look down that record over the years we, we used to be assessed a lot higher and it's just not moving along despite what realtors might say. Uh, now the um, committee on the handicapped met on uh, Wednesday afternoon, chaired by Lisa Terracone at the far right, and they are they raised some interesting issues that the disabled feels important. They feel the city should collect the list of disabled persons living in private homes and multi-residents who need assistance being evacuated from buildings in, a, in an emergency so first responders know where they are. They raised the issue of elevators not always working at the Trans Center and raised the big issue of disabled access at the new Metro North Railroad station that is going to be built. For example, I, I think it has to have ramp access because you, if the elevators are out, yeah, I think ramps are the best way to help the disabled at a new station. The issue of removal of snow from around parking meters was highlighted as a major problem for disabled, and I might add mobile persons like you, you and me. And the DB, DPW is responsible for getting the owners and the storefront renters to uh, shovel out adequate pathways. The committee is also planning independent inspections of city sidewalks and curbs to identify crosswalks and depressed curbings for the disabled that are in bad shape and in need of repair. And if you have disabled issues and situations you want the committee to bring to the city's attention, contact the chair of the committee, Lisa Terracone, at this email address, L Lisa L Terracone at uh, WILC.org. All right, now, moving along, George Latimer brought back basketball at the county center uh, a couple of weeks ago. There's a picture of George with one of the officials and romping off center court, or sort of saying hello to everybody. And Scott Pepper was the um, choice for the school district this week. It was announced he is the new assistant superintendent for human resources. He comes to us from the um, um, Morristown Township where he had occupied a similar position and he was previously a superintendent in New Jersey. He is retired from that position and he is now been working in New York for us starting June the 1st. Now, uh, before we get any further along, I want to say, tip my hat to Keith, the, our terrific director, and Rita, here at the um, television station. Keith has been responsible for 
pump, pumping this uh, program full of videos and as, as Rita, and their help has been invaluable in making this show possible. Thank you, Keith and Rita, for all your work. Now, moving along, we have an interview with uh, Ron Cook that was conducted by Paul Feiner. You can hear that on the WPCNR.com website. Ron Cook was the first black person to attend Ardsley High School back in 1965. And it's a fascinating interview, and we heartily recommend it. Now, Peter, I'm sure you have Oh, one other thing, Peter. We, I want to mention that S Sports is coming to the Galleria, which is a video gaming parlor, and um, it is one of the most popular uh, things for tw 18 to 25 year olds to do. Right now, right up there next to the movies. Now, is there anything else, Mr. Trump, this week did this week other than guns? The Trump administration's Department of Health and Human Services is holding teenage girls hostage in order to prevent them from obtaining abortions. The American Civil Liberties Union is suing to try to end this outrage. The teenagers are immigrants new to the country. Spearheading the Trump administration's policy is the head of the Office of Refugee Resettlement, Scott Lloyd, a Trump appointee who has a long history of opposing abortion and no previous experience in running a refugee resettlement agency. White House Communications Director Hope Hicks quit her job, paying $179,000 a year. It's expected she'll be cooperating with Special Counsel Robert Mueller, who is investigating the Russian interference with our presidential election, Trump family business dealings, and obstruction of justice. While in the White House, Hicks had been dating Rob Porter, Trump's secretary who's accused of having beaten his ex-wives. Hicks' resignation followed by one day the resignation of her deputy communications director, Josh Raffel. Reports say President Trump has a nickname for Attorney General Jeff Sessions, with whom he has been feuding. Trump calls Sessions Mr. Magoo. White House Deputy Chief really? of Staff Rick Dearborn is expected to leave his job in the next few weeks. Trump's Secretary of HUD, Ben Carson, says he has canceled the order for a new dining table and chairs for his office, which would have cost taxpayers $31,000. The New York Times reports that Jared Kushner, who, like Trump, has refused to give up his outside business interest, received tens of million dollars in loans for his troubled real estate empire from finance executives he met with at the White House. Federal law prohibits federal employees from conducting their own private business on government property and on government time and a surprise move which sent the stock market tumbling yesterday and as we're recording it it's still down today president trump ordered tariffs on foreign steel and aluminum imports a twenty five percent tax on steel ten percent on aluminum get yourselves a copy of the new york times watch television and you'll find out what really is going on in this country john bailey peter katz and jim Be jim benaroff good night or white plains away This has been White Plains Week, news and commentary about White Plains, Westchester, and the world. The views and opinions expressed on this program were solely those of the participants. White Plains Week, produced by White Plains Citizen Net Reporter and presented on Optimum Cable Channel 76 and Verizon Fios Channel 45. You may view White Plains Week anytime on the internet at whiteplainsweek.com, youtube.com, and wpcommunitymedia.org. For White Plains Week, this is Peter Katz speaking.